It's just yes. You. It's just you and me. <laughs> and a few friends that want to know more about your books, which... Yes. Yes. So. All right. Okay. And I absolutely loved your map. Oh, yay. I it. Yes. It's like, this is so cool. Um, I was really into this. Like, I'm there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad you loved it. Welcome back. I'm so excited to introduce you to an author today. Lauren Beeson, she, I met her at a book signing and just fell in love with her books so much and grabbed a few and just want to share her with you because she has become a quick favorite author. And so I didn't want you to miss out on Lauren. So welcome to Amazon Live, Meet the Author Show. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, hi, um, I'm Lauren. I write uh, contemporary and romantic suspense. Um, I live in Texas where it is extremely hot right now. Like I'm sweating inside my house. <laughs> um, I'm a mom and a wife and I've got two dogs and I'm an x-ray tech on the side. So that's pretty much all I've got. <laughs> x-ray tech by night and author by day. <laughs> oh, I love that. So night shift and then you get up and write. That's hard. Yes. That is yes. really hard. Mm -hmm. That is like, like pedaling jobs. hardcore to the dream, and you were yes, like, yeah. <laughs> for sure. My toddler is like he's well, he's about to be three, so he's like a whole nother job. So I really have like three jobs. <laughs> oh, sweet. So if you guys recognize her shirt, I have the same shirt. I bought it from her at her book signing, and I wore it yesterday. I should have it today. We could have been twinsies. That wouldn't have been yeah. weird at all. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> You'd have been like, really? Okay. <laughs> this one's a little weird. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about your newest book, One More Kiss. This one just came out in July. And I, you guys, I love this so much. So this book takes place in Topic of Bay. She has a cute little map here. And I just love her marketing. I love her branding. I love her world she's built. Tell us a little bit about your inspiration behind this one. Oh, thank you so much. Um, gosh, I don't even know. I, so I went from, so the art of El loving Ellie was my first book and that's like, yes, that's kind of like a rom-com, like New York city setting. And then I like jumped into romantic suspense and I've got a trilogy there. And then I was like, you know what? I just want to go on like a vacation from that. So like, let me write this Island romance. Um, I wanted to kind of get back to my roots with where I started with Ellie. Like I, I write both. So, because for whatever reason, my brain cannot focus on just one. <laughs> so, um, I was like, well, let's get back into this. So, um, I wrote this Island romance. I've got three books in the series planned so far, but I think it's going to be a continuing one. Um, and so Kate in, and Damon are the main couple and, um, it's, it's an age gap. It's kind of funny. I've had tons of people message me and be like, can you please give your secondary characters their own book? <laughs> they love, they love Chuck and Brandy, which are, uh, you know, the secondary like friends. Um, Kate's kind of lost. She, she is stuck in a precarious situation with her family and she just decides she's a flight attendant. So one day she just decides, you know what, I'm going to go and I've, I've been to this island, but I've never like been to it. Like she's flown to it, but she's never visited. And then at the same time, Damon is getting an award for a dating app that he's developed. And so of course they like cross paths. And um, this one was really fun to do the age gap. Uh, there's a 12 year difference between them. So that was like really spicy and really fun to do. Uh, and then it's a fake dating situation where he ends up meeting her for his events and stuff. Cause he's kind of this, like, he's a grumpy loner, you know, he's a divorcee. Like he's, you know, pretty much sworn off women until he meets Kate and then like just fireworks. So. So good. I love, okay. And we don't do spoilers here, but I love that. Yeah. How it, of course it's romance. It's happily ever after. We know that's coming. So you're not going to let us down, but I love the end. I just, you know, your books aren't predictable. They're, they're, they're a wild ride. And then at the end, you're like, wow, okay, you brought that back together. I don't even know how we got here, but it was yeah. <laughs> Girl, me either. <laughs> like, somehow we got here and it was great. It was fun. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because I, I make fun of myself all the time. I actually have like a little squirrel sticker on my computer. I'm such a squirrel. My thoughts are just everywhere. 
So like when I'm when I'm not really like a plotter, but I kind of have to be like with the big stuff. So like what you're saying, like circling around, like I like make sure I check all those points, <laughs> you know, like by the time I get to the end, I like I even tell my editor, I'm like, OK, here's all my squirrel notes and I need you to make sure that they, you know, <laughs> my squirrel notes. <laughs> yes, I do like that. in the circle analogy. Yes. Yeah. If you're like going to do like following, like romancing the beats to beat out your story, yes. that is kind of a interesting way to think about it. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely. I do. I use, um, or well, you know, I've got it memorized now, but uh, like behind me, I have romancing the beat. It's a great tool for um, writers to use to keep yourself on track and to hit those beats that readers love, that they look for, that they crave in their writing. I mean, I mean in your writing. Um, when they pick up a book, you know, they, it's like funny because now as a writer, but I was, I was such an avid reader before and I can see both sides of it. You know, like when you pick up a book, you expect it to hit a certain mark and, and give you those feelings and like hit those beats. And so anyway, I, I love that book. I love that tool. That is a really good tool. I use yeah. it myself. I've not used it before. And then used it before and you can definitely tell the difference when you don't I end up yes. an entire book I'm like that was fun <laughs> <laughs> that was not fun <laughs> not fun don't do that again you know <laughs> so you also have a trilogy um that you yes. talked about is that betting blind and waging war and dealing dirty yes that's my romantic suspense series and like talk about a wild ride like that was crazy um, my husband, so I wrote the art of loving Ellie and that was like, that was like my baby. That was my first, my debut book. It's got a lot of emotion in it. Like tons of people have told me like, okay, that made me cry. Like for real, <laughs> like, I know it, it got a little emotional. I mean, I love it. But then, so when I got ready to write my next book, I sat down with my husband. He's like my co-author. Basically I call him that he thinks it's so funny. We sat down at the kitchen table and I was like, okay, babe, I need like, I just need some like boy inspiration because my brain is in like, like gunslinging and like, you know, unaliving and like, <laughs> you know, like this crazy world, like give me some, some boy brain like to bounce off of. So we kind of created this, this world for the first book. And then I took all of that and made a trilogy. Um, and we're big gamblers. Like, well, we don't get too much anymore with my toddler, but you know, we, we love uh, the casino scene and all of that. So it was really fun to write that into that, that series. So that is fun. Where yeah. did your love of reading and writing begin? Um, you know, I, I have been reading since, since I, I could read. My mom used to always tell me that she would just find me alone in my room, like just reading books. Like I would just have like a little pile of, you know, like goosebumps. Okay. I was just talking with somebody about this the other day. Do you happen to remember the goosebumps? Um, choose your own story. Yes. Okay. Okay. I used to like steal those from my math teacher's classroom. I would like, like just sneak them into my backpack and like take them home and read them and then put them back. <laughs> I loved them so much. I don't know why. And then uh, I was talking to somebody the other day and they were like, you should do a romance, choose your own story. And I was like, that's brilliant. <laughs> that is brilliant. So, you know, like it, this is a little different, but there's these books and actually your son would probably like them. And they're um, like a choose your own adventure type book. And it's Danny and Darla. And so okay. if you look at it, look it up. Um, choose, yes. Sassy watching said, choose your own story with a bomb in the nineties. Yes. Yes. Uh, and Christopher Pike it. books were my favorite too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But these Danny and Darla books for little kids, like choose your own adventure. You can be bad or you can be good. So it'll Love say, that. Danny did this. Should he throw a fit or should he listen to his mom? And every time my daughter's like, he's going to throw a fit. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. We don't listen to mom. <laughs> She's my rebel kid. I'm like, Oh great. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. imagine writing a romance book that flips forward to yeah. which one she chooses. Oh man. That would be so hard to write. I feel like, <laughs> Oh my gosh. I can't even, I can't even fathom it, but it would be so cool. <laughs> it would be so cool because you could go back and read it several times and choose different. Yeah. Yes. I feel like that would be like the ultimate. I like, the challenge of writing. Yes. I like picking different, I like writing in different point of views. I like 
writing different tropes. I like all this. If it makes my brain stretch, I like it. I'm weird. Yep. And so no, I, I can relate. This is the this this technique would probably put stretch marks on our brains. <laughs> God, yes, I love that. Oh my God, I love that. But yes, you're absolutely right. It would be. I don't it would think be a I'm brave enough sure. to do that yet, but I think that would be fantastic. And, yeah, and and even if, especially if you wrote it in a suspense way, where mm-hmm. you know they did something here that was like dangerous and yeah, I, I write um well the series I just wrote was small town, steamy contemporary romance with funny notes in it. And, um, my friend writes really dark taboo romance and she's reading it right now. And I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, I know. We- it's so- <laughs> yes. she's, she didn't say that. She was like, this is really great. I needed a hallmark feel good. A and, palate cleanser. Yes. And she's like, but you know, when, if this was my book, I would have had this lady stab this guy. And I'm like, <laughs> Okay, you laugh, but in the original manuscript, it was bad like that. And my editor's like, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, we're going to have to cut that out. <laughs> She's like, we can't break people's arms. And, you know. Yeah, I can't tell you how hard that was for me with this book because I really was like, it is hard to switch your brain over. And so, like, I was like, well, maybe I can keep some suspense elements. So, like, I really relate to what you're saying because, like, I, I was going to maybe throw some stuff like that in there but then it just wasn't jiving it just wasn't working so i i cut it out and it ended up being like just a really funny light like you know vacation romance which i still i mean i love this book that is a great way to describe this and you know what in the dead of winter when you guys are watching the replay and you're like i am so sick of winter like you know i'm talking (laughs) about january February, where you're like dear god where is spring this is going to be your book right yeah. here. So grab it now. I mean, I like the physical copy myself. I'm, I think it's really pretty, but Thank if you. you, you can grab it on Kindle too. So this is going to be your vacation read. That's a great way to put it. I didn't think about that. I did read it by the pool. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Very good pool vibes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I love a good, uh, flight attendant. Yeah. That was, I like that. that was- I don't even know where that came from. I think I think a lot of authors write from experience. Um, and I don't have any personal experience as a flight attendant, but I traveled a lot before my son. And it, it, he's not even an inhibitor, honestly. It, COVID was more the problem there. But um, we used to, I mean, my husband and I used to travel all the time. And so that, we've been to Hawaii a couple of times, which helped kind of give me a little bit of a vision for this. Um, and so I was like, this would be so fun. And I actually have a friend who I ended up, um, oh, I, I met her on Instagram and, um, I was like, she's a flight attendant. So I was like, Hey, can I, can I pick your brain? Could you read this and like, tell me like, is it hitting the marks? And so she kind of helped me sort of like a sensitivity reader, I guess, you know, um, she made sure that it was like all, you know, flowing and sounded correct and, you know, helped me there. So I was telling somebody the other day that like writing is like 60% research. I swear. Like you're just constantly researching. Like you type something and you're like, wait a second. You got to hop over to Google and like, make sure that you're right. (laughs) Or daydreaming. I know sometimes my husband will be like, what are you looking at? Cause I'll just be staring off into space. Nothing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. (laughs) Plotting someone's murder. (laughs) I mean, that's the (laughs) life of, uh, you know, someone who just is a creative, I think. Yes, um, another flight attendant that writes really good books, if that's your jam, which is my jam, is uh, Lacey Walden. Okay. She wrote From the Jump. Oh, I can't remember. I had her on the show and I and she just had something else come out too, but she's a flight attendant. That's her nine to five. And then in between flights, she's in the back on her laptop writing. Yes. And so Lacey she has a Walden. great workout her up. and just loves traveling. I asked her too. I was like, do you think, I mean, she's done really well as an author I'm like do you think you'll quit and just write she's like oh no I need yeah. I need a fodder book fodder she's like I get it all the time flying I see people I, I hear things and it's like yes I'm I like, can only imagine the people watching like the level of people yeah. watching you could do as a flight attendant <laughs> yeah just hearing things you're like what <laughs> yeah like like listening <laughs> yeah so um what are you currently working on um, so I'm actually in a partner project uh, with a friend of mine, and she's actually my editor as well. <laughs> um, her name's Amanda Cuff, 
and we're working on a book called High Voltage and it's coming out October 21st. And um, it's like a steamy, sexy uh, brother's best friend romance that's set in a small town. It's got some second chance vibes. Um, and that's been really fun and really challenging. Um, like putting two brains together on one project is like, I mean, you, we have such similar personalities and we get along so well. I really truly consider her one of my best friends, but like when we're trying to put our brains together, it's like, you know, you have to really work to like get it smooth and like, you know, give and take. And I mean, it's a true partnership. So it's yeah. been really fun. And like we were talking about earlier, just challenging, like a, a good like brain stretcher, you know? Yep. I think two brains are better than one. We always learn things with every book and just yeah. having this experience to co-write. I've interviewed a lot of co-authors, um, Ella Frank, Brooke Blaine, uh, Christina Lauren, um, to name a few. I yeah. More. I know there's more. Uh, Piper Rain. They do. A oh, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I think I might have just read one of her books. Does she write vampires? Mm, I don't know if they have vampires, but they have okay. like small town romance and a lot of books. They write prolifically. But just hearing how challenging it is to put those two brains together and come up with a masterpiece is really cool. I also think together we can go faster. Yes. And so and further. And it's a lot less lonely than writing and doing everything on your own. And then, you know, when the book comes out, you know, there's that letdown where you're like, uh, okay, now I'm like really tired. <laughs> I want to go. Yes. Oh my gosh. The exhaustion. You can have somebody yes. to do the book life with. So you guys can pre-order High Voltage. It's pulled down below on the carousel and it's $1.99 right now. So you can grab it, pre-order it, and it'll be on your Kindle on October 21st when it releases. I always love that when I pre-order something and then I open my Kindle and I'm just like Christmas. It's like, <laughs> yes, that's the best feeling. And especially when you get that email and like, because I don't know about you, but I just, I just buy and pre-order. And especially when they're like they marked down. Uh, my husband Do get those. <laughs> Do what? They send emails when you pre-order. Oh. <laughs> Oh yes, girl. Yes, they okay, do. Okay, so I think my husband gets all those because I had no idea. So he probably gets so many emails. My God, that is hilarious. He's probably like, oh, she ordered another book. Yeah, and he can see the title and everything. So that's <laughs> hysterical. <laughs> okay, I had no idea. That's really funny because I pre I I fall down rabbit holes all the time where I'm yes. like that looks good. I'm pre-ordering it. And I, I don't even care if it comes out later on Kindle Unlimited because I don't want to lose it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I don't want to gonna buy it anyway. And you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. in my book budget. And then later I have it in there and I'm like, Oh yeah, I, I want yes. that. And then, cause I'll forget. I mean, mm -hmm. you know how many naps and things that squirrels I'm going to see until <laughs> October 21st. <laughs> like Exactly. A <laughs> exactly. I totally know what you mean. It, it, it is. It's like Christmas. Like you open your Kindle, you're like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot about that. And I wanted to read it so bad. So. Apparently my husband knows about all my pre-orders now. <laughs> yes, he sure does. <laughs> might be able to change the setting. <laughs> well, he hasn't said anything, so it must be okay. Well, he yeah. encourages my book love, so it's fine. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I always like to ask our authors, what are you reading right now? Um, I am actually reading a vampire series and to be honest with you, the name of the author escapes me. That's why I was like, is it Piper Rain? Cause it's something similar like that. Um, dark obsession, I think is what it's called, mm -hmm. but I'm obsessed with vampires. Like, so it's so funny. My, my husband, um, he was like, when I first started this whole journey, he was like, why are you not writing paranormal? And for the longest time, I didn't really understand why I didn't because it's something that I've always been passionate about. Um, like when you asked me earlier about what got me into reading, like, you know, of course I read all the young adult books and whatever, but then when I hit, when I hit adulthood and I figured out that there was like sexy vampires, I was like, <laughs> wait a, wait a second, wait a minute. <laughs> it's like and that transition just, like, from the YA books to the, you're like, don't mind yeah. if I do. <laughs> I mean, like just head first. I mean, yeah. Anyway, so he was like, why are you not writing? And I was like, I don't know. I never really thought about it. But in more like recent times, I've realized that I just want to keep it separated. You know, like, yeah, I, 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 that's my, my reading passion. And then, you know, I write 
the contemporary side and I enjoy that and I don't have to worry about like mixing the two and if I don't do it justice then I've failed my favorite genre you know like there's no pressure there and I can jump into it and just because like I don't know about you now that you're you're a writer yourself but reading can be really challenging um I have a hard time because like I can't turn my writer brain off I I see no certain things and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I would have done it that way or, or, you know, just, there's just things that you can't unsee as a writer where like when you're a reader, you, you're, you have this like ignorant bliss <laughs> and I sometimes miss that, you know, yeah. but anyway, that's a squirrel. <laughs> well, I, um, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I definitely I, agree. That is so true, yeah. but you know, never say never. That's the one yeah. thing I love about being indie is we have that flexibility to just yes. stretch ourselves and do things you know, um, I'll run some things by my agent and she'll be like, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love her. I love her to pieces, but she'll be like, no, throw that on your indie side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and there's just a niche market on the other side, but on our side, we get to stretch and do things we want to do and do yeah. fun things and try new things. And I love that so much. I also love that we're not put in a box. So yes. you can write suspense, romantic suspense. You can write romantic rom-coms. You can write mm -hmm. just contemporary romance. It, yeah. There's really no box or formula to stay in. It's a, it's like telling a painter what to paint. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there are a lot of, and I'm not dogging them by any means, what works for one person does not work for the next person. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of authors that, like, swear by just, like, staying in your lane and, like, producing the same thing over and over again. And I'm like, I love that for you. And I love that it works for you, but it does not work for me. I can't keep myself in a box. I cannot keep my cre creativity like narrowed down to just one thing. And, you know, as long as they're in the same wheelhouse, at least in, in my mind, then I, I think it's fine. You know, like their readers are still going to find me. They can still follow, you know, it's not like I'm writing this like crazy out there, like murder mystery type with like no romance whatsoever. And then also writing like light hearted, you know, stuff and then trying to combine the two for like my image, you know what I mean? So at least I'm, I'm kind of still able to blend them. Yeah. So, you know, like you said, and even if I was doing that, it would be fine. Like you have the freedom to do so. So, and I, and I don't have the brain for managing multiple writing, uh, names. So I, <laughs> I'm just not even going to like go on that adventure. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's like, I, I was thinking about that too. I was like, I don't even think I can handle what I have now. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I do know authors who have pen names and yes. you wouldn't even know who they were. Mm -mm. You know, you didn't know. And they just enjoy it. But I'm like, oh, man, that's like a whole nother job. I'm good yeah. We're good. I mean, good on you. You keep at I'm, it. Yeah, so I'm selfish. So keep going. But yes. um, and I'm too tired. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Oh, I always like to ask our uh, authors, too. What are you watching right now? Um, to be honest with you, I do not watch TV. I am such a weirdo. My husband will binge watch an entire Netflix series in like eight hours. <laughs> and I, my ADD is just, it's too much. I cannot sit still and watch TV. I really like to watch, um, baking shows. Yes. So like I, we have, um, YouTube TV to where you can like, you know, search things on demand. So I watch a lot of Guy Fieri and a lot like, like, uh, diners, drive-ins and dives and um, guys grocery games. <laughs> I love sure. him. And, and I watch uh, like spring baking championship. I swear those are just like my comfort shows. Like I just sit down and I'm like, okay, if I'm going to watch TV, then I'm just going to watch something I know I'm going to love. And I love food. So. <laughs> well, um, Brene Brown, she's also a Texan. She writes uh, self-help nonfiction type books, but I love her stuff. And I love her podcast. She says, when she gets ready to write a book, she puts on what she calls white noise, like documentaries, those oh, things that um, don't stimulate you, but they're kind yeah. of allow your brain to kind of stay on a track and think. And she says she'll sit and watch those shows with a notebook. And that's how she maps out all her books because she listens to white noise. And for some reason, it gives oh. her brain permission to just kind of think. And I think that's genius. Wow, that is very smart. 
Yeah. It's hard for me to, to like listen to anything. I don't like a lot of people listen to music and stuff when they're writing. I cannot, because like what you said, like it just, it stimulates my brain and I can't, it, it's like too much, you know, I just have to have it like quiet. <laughs> I actually usually have a fan on in the background and that's like it, like what, that's like my white, my white noise is just a fan. <laughs> I think that works for plotting, but I definitely like you cannot, like I need it to be quiet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Like silence. Like yeah. there's no way I could do it with my son home or, you know, like my husband bothering me or anything like that. Like I need quiet and peace. <laughs> How do you find that quiet with such a busy life? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's difficult to find it. <laughs> do you get up early and write or what do you, what so your- I recently, um, this year, I think it was in May. I, I was extra full time. Um, and then I was working like insane hours between momming, working x-ray and writing. I would literally get up at 6 a.m., get ready for work, work, you know, nine to five, come home, mom for, you know, that block in the evening where you can absolutely do nothing else. And then as soon as his head hit the pillow at 830, I was writing until midnight or one o'clock in the morning, every single day, every day. And then on the weekends, I was writing during his naps because he mm-hmm. used to take these amazing three-hour naps. He doesn't do that anymore, and I really miss that. Aww. Oh. I think I lost you. Are you still there? Oh, you froze. Okay, well, just come back in. Okay. Are you still there? I think she froze, but she'll come back in. It'll be okay. We'll keep going. So her book, One More Kiss, is available. You guys can grab it below. She'll call back in. Don't worry. But this is her book. So good, you guys. This is a true escape um, vacation romance. So good, you guys. Lauren is amazing. She's one of those hidden gems that I found at a book signing event and just... Love meeting her and loved checking out her books. So if you don't have her book, definitely grab it below. It's $3.99. You can grab it right now and start reading it on your Kindle or you can grab the paperback, which I love her paperback. She even has a little map of her Topic of Bay, her fictional uh, vacation destination that she created. And so you guys can grab this today and start reading. Hey, she's back. Okay. Hey, no worries. We lost you for a second, but we kept going. Are you still there? Oh, you're muted. Just unmute yourself. Welcome back. Okay. Okay. Um, I think you're muted. Go ahead and jump back in. So this is her newest one that she has coming out. And then she also has The Art of Ellie, which was the first book. And you guys can grab that as well and get started with that one. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> no worries. I'm so sorry. That has happened a few times recently. I don't know. I think maybe there's just a little toot in our software, but that's okay. I just started talking about your books while you were gone. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, I don't know. She that's okay. Me. We have to get to my favorite question. So I wrote a book with Jennifer Prost, What I Wish I'd Known. And it's kind of a compilation of all the questions that I always ask you guys on the show yeah. is what advice would you have for an aspiring author? Um, I, I say, write, write what you want to write, but keep an eye on the market. So some a huge mistake that I made and we all make as Indies, I, I think, unless you have somebody like in your corner telling you what to do, which I, I did not um is like i just wrote and you know there's nothing wrong with writing the story that's on your heart because you should but if you're if you're going to jump into writing to make money then um you should look at what is what other people are writing like what's in the top 100 on amazon what's doing well um and then take that and form it around your writing you know so like for example, the brother's best friend romance that Amanda and I are writing. 
that is very hot right now. That is a, a trope that people are really loving. So we were like, okay, how can we take that trope and then apply it to our writing? And so that is like, so, so key. And I feel like had I known that from the beginning, my whole career would be like completely different, but you know what, we, that's, that's what this is about. And we, we learn and we learn as we go and that's not going to work for everybody, but I feel like it, it gives you better visibility. It gives you um, a better chance to make some money. It gives you a better chance to reach readers, which to me, like that's my biggest thing is I love my readers. I love interacting with people. I love talking to them. I love when they jump in my DMs and they're like, oh my gosh, I found you randomly. Or, you know, I loved your books and like that feeds my whole soul. So like, I can't be visible if I'm not, you know, a, finding a way to get in front of people. And so anyway, I feel like that, you know, writing to not necessarily writing to market, but the, but kind of writing to market helps, helps those, those things. So That's that would be my, my best advice. <laughs> awesome. Well, where else can we find you and support you online? Um, so actually this, this t-shirt, I was going to say you can, if you like it, book boyfriends do it better. You can find it on my website and, um, I have signed books there. I've got bookmarks and, um, other, you know, little things, little bookish stuff. Um, laurenbeesonbooks.com. You can find me on Instagram. Lauren Beeson books is my handle for, for pretty much everything. Facebook, Instagram. Um, I'm author Lauren Beeson on TikTok though. And I've just recently started TikTok. Well, like in the last few months and it's been a challenge, but. <laughs> it's a lot of fun though. It's, yes. It's it, where all the book people live and it's, I love it. I love, yes. I love, I love finding new books. I'm sure my husband loves getting all the emails. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Did not think of that. So, yeah. and also everyone follow Lauren here on Amazon because you don't want to miss out on any of her releases. So if you go to her book page and you see her author name, it's a hyperlink, you can click that and click the follow button. That way Amazon will let you know whenever she has a new book coming out so you don't miss it. I know mm -hmm. I follow a great author and then if I don't follow them, then they put out all these great books and I'm like, oh, I didn't know, I missed. So I have to go back and catch up. So you don't want to miss yeah. out on any of her new upcoming releases, which um, sounds like you've got some really good things coming, One More Night and yeah. high voltage so you are coming with some great books so everybody check those out and follow lauren here on amazon yeah awesome well thank you so much for joining me today um stand by one moment amazon thank you so much for watching be sure to hit that follow button and i have more lives coming up i'll see you guys on the next one